from uh, Pope Francis, who I call Pope Two-Face the Tenth. Now, I realized something. I had a little difficulty sleeping because many of my listeners are devout Catholics, and they have enjoyed my show and loved my show and loved my values and loved my viewpoints for years. You know, but when the rubber hits the road, you know what's going to happen, don't you? The devout Catholics who have loved me for my traditional family values and my patriotism and my borders language culture message, they're going to go with the Pope. They're not even going to analyze what this Pope is saying and how dangerous he actually is. Now, fortunately, the Pope has no power. He has no legislative power whatsoever. But he sways a lot of sheeple to think that by giving up their liberty, they're going to have something good happen to them in the next world. He sways many of the sheeple to think that America is an evil nation. He sways many sheeple into thinking that America is the greatest polluter on the planet. Well, he ought to reserve those remarks for China and, and India, two of the largest polluters on the planet. When he meets Chairman Zero, maybe he ought to say, I'd like to go to the, uh, your country and lecture you on pollution. Think that'll happen? Nah. Look, I don't even want to talk about the Pope anymore. We know what he is. I've spent three days on him. I've studied him. I expose him in Government Zero. I'm not going to read from the book again. But I would tell you this, many of you have ordered the book because people are dying for the truth on this Pope. I mean, they've heard it. They have inclinations about it. So will enough people read it to understand what I mean by government zero? No borders, no language, no culture. Will they understand that, I, that my warning, my decades of warning America has come to pass? That when I say no borders, no language, no culture, what am I referring to? The Pope is calling for no borders. The Pope is calling for no language. The Pope called for no culture. So in other words, by not standing up to the progressives and radical Islamists who are both working towards similar ends, which is the destruction of Western civilization, to remake it in their own Marxist image and to transform our once free republic into a third world dictatorship ruled by government zero, where there's absolute government and zero representation. Even the rock and roll is depressing me, getting me anguished, not depressing, anguished, anguished, I can't take it. The sanctimonious pope, the sanctimonious religious figures up on the stage with him, going to the ground zero uh, memory of the first responders, and, and they say, those who blew up the World Trade Center and did it in the name of God, said the liberal rabbi, almost broke the television set. The coffee cup almost went through the screen. They didn't do it in the name of God, they did it in the name of Allah. That's what they screamed as they slammed the plane into the tower. But what do you expect, I say to myself? You know, the problem is this. Am I shocked by anything a reformed Jewish rabbi would say? Am I shocked by what a uh, leftist pope would say? Well, I am a little shocked. I am a little shocked. I knew there was a left-wing wing within the Vatican, and I knew it was quite strong. I didn't know that it would elect the pope, nor did I ever think that John Boehner would lobby to have this this radical leftist come to speak before joint session of Congress, ever. Not one word about the mutilation of baby body parts other than very obscure terms. Everything was in obscure terms. He talks about peace on earth. Hey, we're all for peace on earth. How about talking about the churches that are burning in the Middle East? How about talking about the little Christian girls who are being raped around the clock, Mr. Pope, by your Muslim brethren who you're reaching across the aisle now to? How about saying something about that one word of reality? All of these homilies, they don't, just don't do it for me. And as far as the, the, the lack of science and what he talks about with Gaia and global warming, nothing that he says is true. Nothing that he says is founded in science. Then he says we should be kind to immigrants and take more in. We take in more immigrants than all the nations on earth put together. Do you know that? Why doesn't he go to China and tell them to take in some immigrants? especially non-Chinese immigrants. Why does he go give a speech in Japan? There are many Catholics in Japan. And tell them to be kinder and to bring in uh, non-Japanese and make them citizens and give them welfare and give them phones and give them cars and give them food and give them legal services. See how the Japanese would receive that. Only this nation of, of, of jerks puts up with this garbage. That's what's agitating. And then on top of it all, the hypocrisy of this church. The church is sitting on the greatest gold reserve in the world. The church is sitting on the greatest art in the world and um, it has the largest, thickest walls 
around any city on earth. They're telling us to tear down the wall with Mexico that Trump wants to build. You don't see this as hypocrisy? I can't help you. I, I can't help you if you can't see the hypocrisy. And the uh, fact of the matter, I'm calling for immigration leniency. What in the world is he, th is he thinking? What is he thinking? We took in 1.7 million legal immigrants last year. That's more people every year legally than the rest of the world combined. Now add, what, a million that came in illegally? The country's breaking from it. They do not all come here to work. They do not come here to work. They come here to work the system. And it's a shame that we have to listen to this coming out of a religious figure. He should know better. All of this is an attack and assault upon the middle class. That's what it really comes down to. Savage. Well, that was from Friday's show, if you missed it. I gave you a little summary because I know many of you agreed with me, but many of you didn't agree with me. And those of you who didn't agree with me were not so much disagreeing with what I said about the Pope's politics. It was just on principle that you wanted to defend the Pope. And number two, you thought I was attacking Catholicism. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. There's been no greater supporter in na on national radio, on a non-religious broadcast, no greater defender of the Catholic Church than I have been for the last 21 years. However, when I see a politician posing in holy robes, espousing the same politics as Bernie Sanders or Nancy Pelosi or Jerry Brown or any of the other so-called left-wing fanatics, it's my obligation and my duty to say, wait a minute, the king has no clothes. Pope has no clothes. And that's what I was saying to you. Or he's wearing the wrong clothes is what I really should have said. Zero religion. Lenin's Pope, chapter eight, government zero. And it's all in the subhead, politicizing the papacy. papacy. Or the Pope attacks free speech. Or who is the Pope defunding? What is the Pope defunding? Or the Pope promotes junk science. The real agenda behind the Pope's climate change scam. Or the Marxist encyclical on care for our communist home. I've analyzed it. I've told you who wrote these for him. I told you what their politics are. And again, I point out the Pope had a hidden agenda. And it was not seen by Jake Tapperhead. It was not seen by Neil Cavuto. It was not seen by all of the fake conservatives and fake liberals on the media. Never forget who they are and what they do for a living, which is to keep your eyes glued to the screen so they can sell you ads. They have no politics. I do. I'm a devout nationalist. I have been for many years. Borders, language, culture. The Pope has no clothes. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. From talk softly and carry a big stick, Teddy Roosevelt, to talk loudly and carry a broken stick, Barry Obama. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. To see what's going on at the UN today is something to behold, I tell you. I listened to as many of the speeches as I possibly could before the program, and the only one, the only two that I saw who were bellicose were Barack Obama berating Russia and Rouhani of Iran berating the United States and Israel. I think that says an awful lot. I don't have to editorialize on the statement itself. I would say that his constant Aggression towards Russia, his verbal aggressions towards Russia, speaks loudly, very loudly. And I think that this is the last thing on earth we need is a war with Russia. And I pray to God that the sorority that's running the military thinks a few times before launching a strike against Russian or Chinese or Iranian forces who may be, uh, let us say, taking out some of our operatives in the field. Let's pray to God no American troops get hurt. But I can tell you right now, anything is possible. These are how big wars start. But it didn't start with uh, China sailing a uh, aircraft carrier in there. It started with you putting Obama into the White House. It started with you putting a left-wing fanatic into the White House. That's when this started. Another big hour. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Content.
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Look what's going down. You wake up 30 years later and there the degenerates are running in the streets of San Francisco, whipping each other with chains, and they call it a family-friendly event in Nancy Pelosi's backyard. Look what liberalism has brought to this country. Look at the filth and psychosis that pervades the nation. Take a look at it. I watched, I didn't watch, I turned on the, uh, the local newspaper, whatever it is, the, the local San Francisco newspaper, the site, it's one of the sites I go to, and they're glorifying a, a so-called leather parade. And you see the ugliest, most unsavory characters beating each other up in the street with leather, tying each other up, strangling each other on racks in the street. On the one hand, you say, how boring. How awfully boring is this? What do they have to do this in public for? What kind of people are these? In my day, they would have been in a mental hospital. Now they're in Nancy Pelosi backyard, backyard, and she calls it, she once went to this parade, and she called it a Christian values, Catholic values, a leather parade. I swear to God, I'm not making this stuff up. And I look at the parade, and I say to myself, this keeps up. If there is no Christian conservative revival in America and the West, Islam will rule the world. And I stand by those words. I'm telling you as I stand here. I don't know how long it's going to take, but if this keeps up, if the sickness, the debauchery keeps up, Islam will rule the world because there's only so much people can take. They'll flip over to the other side. They'd rather have hardliners from uh, the Muslim world than the psychosis, the, the psychotics running the country. And if you think that I'm mistaken, I hope you're right. But I don't think I'm mistaken. There's only so much debauchery and insanity people will take and can take. Now, of course, as we enter hour three of the Savage Nation, I've been talking about the UN speeches. Putin's speech was impressive. I talked about the Chinese aircraft carrier move that's moved into Syria. I read that on uh, Debka. And I don't think it's a prelude to World War III. But why is China there? I talked about that. Why has China, Russia, and Iran now formed an alliance to take out ISIS? Because Obama and the sorority have not taken out ISIS. Because Obama the phony and the sorority miscalculated everything. They wanted to take out, uh, they wanted to take out Assad. That was their number one goal because that was in Israel's interest to eliminate Assad because Israel's threatened by Syria on the north and by Syria's uh, vassal army, Hezbollah, and they're afraid of them, rightly so. Israel didn't do that well against Hezbollah in the last head-to-head. -head. So Israel figured, let's play some chess and let, let's let uh, ISIS take out Assad. This is my analysis of what's been going on. So you say, well, why would Israel let them rage, burn churches, kill Christians, take women hostage? They figure it's collateral damage. They don't have to fire a shot. Let ISIS do it. Let the former Republican guard of Saddam Hussein do it for them. With our weapons, by the way, U.S. weapons, because Israel didn't fire a shot against ISIS. Have you seen Israeli jets fly over once? Have you seen ISIS do any incursions into Israel? No. Well, you figure out why not. Well, I think you could put two and two together. So where does uh, the U.S. fit into all of this? Well, where does it fit in? Obama was doing Israel's bidding. That's where. And then somehow it worked with Obama's strategy to somehow he can get even with Putin, who in his mind is his arch enemy because he's jealous of him, because he knows Putin is a better man. He knows it in his heart. Men know that about other men. He could just look at him and knows he's a better man. He also knows Putin is the real McCoy, and he knows he's a faker. In his heart of hearts, he knows that. Yeah, and you don't have to read Joseph Conrad to know that. All you got to do is read the heart, of, the heart of Darkness, and you'll know that. And the fact of the matter is, is that for very personal reasons, not even geopolitical reasons, Obama and the sorority have targeted Putin and made him public enemy number one to the detriment not only of the United States, but of the entire world. So now as I speak with you tonight on the Savage Nation at this moment, apparently Putin and Obama are having a head-to-head -head meeting. Boy, what I would pay to be in that room. I'd love to see a live feed of that one. What would you give to see Putin and Obama in a room alone? with no sorority behind them, no cameras, uh, no support staff. Who do you think would win that debate? But it doesn't even matter who wins the debate. 
the facts on the ground won the debate. Russia has special forces there.